This message was preached at the Laborers' Convocation with the theme, Atmos Fruitfulness. It took place at Nisi Training and Retreat Center, Nisi Village, along Mararapan Rino Road, Kaduna, from 13th to 16th November 2019. Good morning again this morning. May the Lord's face shine upon you and grant you his peace. May you experience his presence in a new way. May what we are saying not just be theoretical to you. May it become your life and your experience in the name of Jesus Christ. Yesterday night, we were dealing with the essential definition, conceptual definition for utmost fruitfulness. And one of the things we came up with is to be clearly defined what is the fruit, what is God, divine dresser, what is he growing. And Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. You are branches. So by the virtue of those conceptual definitions that we had to spend time on yesterday, we have come to note that the father the vine dresser, there's only one issue that he is looking for in his vineyard. What is that? He's looking for the true vine, not the hybrid, not the counterfeit, not the wild, but the true vine. And that true vine is clear to us. It's none else but Jesus. Jesus the Christ is God's true vine, is what God is growing. The new species that God is growing among men is the new creation. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And all who have been brought in as branch, he said, you have not chosen me, I chose you. And the only reason why he has ordained you is that you might go and do what? And bring forth fruit. What kind of fruit? The fruit of the vine. The Lord Jesus must be the output the product that men must touch in each of our lives. Hallelujah. I said we shall concentrate our study in John chapter 15. We are still going to go back there because I said there are several principles that lead to a much fruitfulness that the Lord had laid down there for us, which we may not even exhaust, but let's try to go on with it. And so this morning, we'll be looking furthermore at the processes, procedures for utmost fruitfulness, and in this, we shall look at the ministry, the labor of the vine dresser, the father. And then we'll be looking at the active ingredient for fruitfulness, the life of Jesus. And we shall be ending by looking at the necessary abiding of the branch for it to bear fruit. So three things that we're going to be looking at. We're going to look at the ministry, the labor of the vine dresser. We're going to look at the necessary active ingredients for more truthfulness, the life of Christ. And then we shall be looking at the indispensable abiding of the branch for utmost fruitfulness. This they are going to be all put together under the processes and procedures 
for much fruitfulness. Praise the Lord. Chapter 15, and we're going to again pick verses as we study. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, or is the vine dresser. Wow. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, it takes away. And every branch that beareth fruit, it purges or it prunes it, then may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do how many things? nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Verse 8 which will be the verse we are going to stop with for now. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. May the Lord bring increase as we study this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. We start by looking at the processes and the procedures for much fruitfulness. By that, I would like to first insist that fruitfulness is not accidental. Fruitfulness does not come by chance. Fruitfulness is a result of a deliberate action. Fruitfulness is a result of a deliberate, consistent action. So where there is no deliberateness, there is not to be expected any fruitfulness. Because to be fruitful is not an accident. It doesn't happen by, happen by chance. There are processes and there are procedures that must be embarked upon for there to be fruit at all. And so the first issue this morning, I will be looking at the labor, the intent, in intentional labor of the vine dresser for fruitfulness that I want to spend a bit of time to deal with. Now, so who is the vine dresser? All right. So whenever you hear me talk about the vine dresser, I am talking about the Father. I'm talking about God, the Father, who himself is intentionally looking for the fruit of the true vine. God is intentionally and deliberately looking for the multiplication of the true vine of Christ's life. Uh, if I say it in a very quick way, I pray to make many to you. I want you to know that when God created the heaven and the earth, and God proposed in himself, in the Godhead, and said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. Man that will be like us. 
man that will stand and produce the kind of thing we need on the face of the earth. He was deliberate. He went to labor. Unfortunately, that first man failed. That first man disappointed God to the point that God said, it repented me. I regret making man on the face of the earth. I will wipe him out. And ever since then, we have seen man, the natural man, whose activity and his way of doing things is constantly contrary and in conflict with the will of God. So permit me to say to you, if you don't know, that any other man you see on the face of the earth, who has not come into a new experience of the new birth, they are a nuisance to God. You are not hearing me. Are you hearing me? He said, he who has the son has life. He who that does not have the son has no life. What again the Bible say? The wrath of God does what? The rock, who will read that for us? John chapter 3. John 3. And I want you to see the last verse of the book of John chapter 3. Who is that reading? He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Yes. Uh -huh. The wrath of God abides. When he uses the word abides, that means the wrath of God is continually, continually upon him. Every time God looks at a man, the natural, who has not received the light that God wants to plant on the face of the earth, God's wrath is permanently resting upon that life. God is saying, this is not the man I want. This is not the man I'm planting. This is not the man I want to grow. This is not the man, this is not the kind of species I'm looking for on the face of the earth. Even if you were born in the natural as soon as you are born, God's intention, are you all listening to me? Or oh, you are not hearing me? God's intention is that you will be born again. You are only born in the flesh in order to be born again. I don't know how to put it, but let me put it in a way that may be clear to you. How many of you have ever grown in communities where they plant cocoa, cocoa plantation. Can I see any of your hand up? You have ever seen where they plant cocoa before? Oh, there are not too many here. So you understand. Now, cocoa is the cash product that cocoa farmers are always wanting to plant. But if you plant cocoa directly, Without a protection, it might not grow, it might not do well. So in order to nurse cocoa, are you hearing me? They plant plantain. So you see a lot of plantain around cocoa farm. The cocoa farmer is not interested in plantain. What is he interested in? In cocoa. As soon as plantain, and you know plantain grows fast, faster than cocoa itself. But what it does is that it will provide a kind of cool environment and shades for cocoa to grow. 
As soon as cocoa takes roots, are you understanding? Plantain becomes a weed for the cocoa farmer. You are, not, are you with me at all? Even though many people will think that ah, plantain, oh, plantain, as far as the cocoa farmer is concerned, plantain is a weed. Even if you get anything good out of plantain, to the cocoa farmer, it's a byproduct. Is that all right? And the plantain farmer, I mean the cocoa farmer, is too quick, eager, to get rid of plantain so that what he is planting may find space to develop. But it's so much that you will not be able to grow your cocoa except you create an atmosphere of plantain. Why were you born in the flesh first? Why were you born of your mother first? Let me inform you. It is not that God is interested in that which was born of a woman. That which is born of the flesh is what? Is flesh. And it cannot please God. The only reason why you were born in the flesh is so that you can be born again. Oh my God. If you were born and you were not born again, it were better you were not born. God, divine dresser, is only looking for the true vine. But it so happened by divine ordination that all those who will carry the true vine, they needed the natural birth to be the context for the new birth. May I inform you that if God looks down and he sees thousands or millions of people, millions of people that are born of the flesh and they are not born yet of God, of the Holy Spirit, they are only a trouble, a nuisance to him. They were only born only for one matter, for them to be born again. And anyone who is not so born again is a waste. And they will be flushed out like the cocoa farmer comes to cut off all the banana plantain plants as weeds. That's why in time past when you go to cocoa plantation you can get plantain almost for nothing. In fact, if you walk to a cocoa farmer and say, can I please uh, cut this uh, plantain uh, quickly? So the man will be so happy, say, cut it, cut it quickly, cut it quickly. He can even pay you to cut it off. Are you understanding? It's only now that when the price of cocoa and the market for cocoa has fallen because of mismanagement of our economy, that cocoa farmer, who should have been looking for real original cocoa, are now settling down to become plantain producers. That was not their plan. When you use a very big a portion of land, hectares of land that is meant to, to, to bring cocoa and you now you see if ordinary plantain, oh, cocoa farmer say, what a wasted land. So, the first issue. 
the vine dresser, our father God. The only thing that is interested, that he is deliberately wanting to plant and grow in this time, is the new life, the new creation, the true vine. That's the first thing. And I want you to be clear about it. Every human being you see on the road, they were only existing because God is expecting them to be what? To be born. To be what? To be born again. It would be a waste if they die and they were not born again. It would be a disaster if they die without having the experience of the new birth. It will be an eternal loss. There will be souls that will perish forever. So now, if you ask, so God, what are you looking for on the face of the earth? He will tell you just one thing. I'm looking for the new creation. I'm looking for the new and the true vine. I'm looking for a species of men and women who are like my son, Jesus Christ. That is it. Now, what does God do to get that was the first procedure and process. It is to plant it. You cannot expect fruit where you have planted nothing. You cannot expect fruit, talk less of more fruit, talk less of much fruit, talk less of utmost fruitfulness where you have planted nothing. That which a man sows, that shall he reap, is a rule. So, what is the first process and the first procedure is that the vine dresser sows the seed, the seed of the true vine into the hearts of men and women. He casting the seed. He said the kingdom of God is like a sower who went out to do what? To, to sow the seed. The seed is the word of God. We cannot expect the kingdom life. We cannot expect fruit. Whatever dimension of fruit we are expecting, whether it's fruit or more fruit or much fruit or utmost fruitfulness where nothing has been planted. So, permit me to ask, has your life been sown with the seed of the life that God is looking for? The seed that can produce the life. Do you have it? First John chapter 3 says. That which is born of God. Does not continue to sin. You know why? Because the seed of God. Abides in him. We cannot expect you to produce Jesus Christ. When he has not been planted in your heart. We cannot expect you to bring forth the fruit of the true vine. When the seed of the true vine has not been planted inside the soil of your own heart. That's the beginning of it. May I inform you. And this is very important. Very important. Sometimes you go to a farm. You go to a farm. There are three issues I want to raise when you go to a farm. You know sometimes when we have harrowed or we have made our hips and it is time of planting, 
You know, sometimes as you are planting, a seed will fall here. Mistakenly, not knowing, you, the, the, the planter may think he has planted everything, only to discover that this particular row, he did not finish planting it before he jumped on this other row. Has it happened before? All right. When the plant begins to come out, what happens to this area that he mistakenly omitted? Eh? Nothing will grow there. If anything grows there at all, there will be weeds. Why? Because that particular row was omitted. But it's in the same farm. Look at the row by the side here. Coming out with the maize. But this one, coming out with ordinary weeds. Because when the seed was being cast, this row was mistakenly omitted, but it's still on the same farm. That's the first condition I want you to think about. You might be in this same vineyard. You might be seated together with us. And it will look as if you have been harrowed together with everybody. But when the thing began to shoot out, nothing but weed was coming out of your own life. Why? Because the crucial seed that produces the kingdom life has not been cast in your life. Can I say to you, you don't get that seed by association. You don't get that seed because you are in the environment. You don't get that seed because you are getting the same rain. Rain may be falling, but if it is falling on a soil that has no seed, it will only fertilize the weeds. And some people have become very, very religious. They know our songs. They know our mannerisms. They understand our language, but they don't have our lives because the seed of that life has been omitted. Even if you come for discipleship, discipleship, are you hearing me? Is only a training of the life that is there. If the life is omitted, discipleship does not put it there. Can we ask a question? When was that seed cast into your heart? Can you remember it? Can you note it? When did it happen? When did you personally, particularly, and deliberately get planted with this life? I used to hear many messages. I used to do this. I used to do that. That will not answer it. The more you grow, the more you discover that you don't have what it takes to produce Christ's life. Because you don't have a seed inside of you. We cannot compromise that. Divine dresser does not compromise that. Hallelujah. That's the first condition. And don't think I'm being too meticulous to check with you. Do you have the seed? Maybe the reason why you are falling and down in sin and living, even though you desire to be a, you know, a, a very good child of God, but you don't, you, you just find that what is growing out of you is natural. Could it be that you don't have the seed? You have the songs. You have the fertilizers. Are you hearing me? And there are even people who are struggling to water it, but there's no seed. 
You can't be ashamed about that. And you can't say, I've been here for too long. How can they be saying, and let them check whether I have the seed or not? Ah, that would be a, a terrible, costly assumption. Costly assumption. Do you know what I found when I used to follow them to the farm? I found something else that they do. What is it that they do? When they are checking, and they are finding that on this particular line, all the yam we planted, they are growing. Because, you know, if you plant the seed at the same time, are you hearing me? Perhaps on the same day, you expect their growth to be commensurate. Oh, am I talking something you don't understand? Eh? I'm telling you the truth now. Those of us, that were planted at the same time, at the same rate of time, if nothing goes wrong, we should also be classmates in spiritual growth. If nothing goes wrong, when this brother is a pastor there, I shouldn't be less than a deacon somewhere. Are you hearing me? Because we are planted at the same time. When that other brother is now uh, leading something for God, because we are planted at the same time, if nothing went wrong with my own seed, uh -uh, I should be at the same rank with him. Because God is not a respecter of what? Of persons. But now let's imagine that when you now come, you now saw that the one here, they have grown to this side. They have grown to this side. Then you came here suddenly, and you find that this one is just like this. It's not coming out. What does the farmer do? What does the farmer do? He would like to check. So they would dig around the plant to see whether the seed was still there or something ate it. It's the labor of the vine dresser. He must check. Is the seed still there? Or what happened? Did something eat it? So when they began to dig, ha! and sometimes I follow farmers and I see it and it used to baffle me. When you go down, you now discover that underneath there is dryness. You see ants. You see termites. Eh? Oh my God. And you look for the seed. The thing was completely shrunk, dried, so that no matter the water you are pouring, it cannot respond. The seed has been attacked. Correct vine dresser, are you understanding? Must dig the soil to check whether there is an attack on your roots or not. Will you permit God, the vine dresser, to unveil your bottom this morning. I use a bad language. I say, will you allow God, the vine dresser, to dig up your bottom? Eh? For us to see whether your root is still intact or it has been dried inside. Because no matter the watering, no matter the watering, upon a plant whose roots have already died. Can it work? Oh my God, can it work? So that's the next labor of the vine dresser. He checks. He digs up to find out whether the seed is still viable or it has been eaten up. There are some of you that it looks as if you were planted when your colleagues were planted. The same message that changed your brother was the message that you also received. The same follow-up class that they started with was the follow-up class that you attended. The watering that everybody received was the same watering that was given to you. What, what is the reason? 
Why those who were supposed to be your age mates in the things of the spirit, why are they higher and you are still Arara? You know what we call Arara in Yoruba language? A dwarf who is not growing. Shouldn't that cause you concern? Talk to me. Shouldn't it cause you concern? I'm hearing you say, well, you know, in Christ, we don't compare and contrast. I thank you for that. I thank you for that empty statement. Whereas we don't compete, but we contrast. We say, what is the problem? Why this brother, whom we started with, who received the same faith like us, who was filled with the Holy Spirit supposedly when we were all being filled with the Holy Spirit, what has happened that he did not just rise from the ground, he's still like this, Why his colleagues are up like this. Uh -uh, what is it? Can we check the roots? I want to ask a question. Will you allow the vine dresser this afternoon or this morning to check your roots? Eh? Or you think we should just leave you like that? It will be important. It's part of the labor of the vine dresser. The vine dresser is not here to kill, but he's here to check, to dig around. Is the root still there? Is the seed still there? And can I tell you what he does? You want me to tell you what they normally do? When they dig and they find that, ah, something ate up the seed. Look at the empty carcass. That's why it didn't grow. What do they do now? Do they just cover it up and say, well, by the grace of God, it will grow? What do they do? They get another correct seed and plant. If God needs to replant your life today, is there anything wrong about that? There's no need to be clinging to an historical faith, historical salvation that does not have result. There's no need for you to say, I was born again in 1979. Ah, 79 to 2019, 40 years, and you are still like this. May God punish that kind of born again that you have. Ah! For 40 years, how many of you are happy that you have a baby that was delivered 40 years ago and he's still like this, sitting on the floor and he's still crawling? I say, Mommy, I want to, I want to suck your breast. Will you not go for deliverance? Will you not cry out and say, hey, the devil has posted a banner to my life. This is a child that is not growing and will not let me go anywhere. Father, deliver me from it. Do you think God, divine dresser, is happy with a dwarf? A dwarf wastes all the provision, all the labor, all the grace of the vine dresser. If that seed must be replanted, when it is time to pray, don't hesitate to say, God, I've checked that my roots have been attacked. What should I be breaking forth in my life? I thought I was wondering why I'm just on one spot. I didn't know that the thing is inside. I was blaming people that they were trampling upon me. They were looking at me as if I'm not serious. It's not that they are looking at you. It's that you are not serious. If you are serious, they will know that you are serious. It's who you are that they are evaluating. Lord, change my story. Would somebody pray that kind of prayer this morning? Lord, please do what? Change my story. What again did I see? The third consideration of, of 
a vine dresser. When they have planted and things are growing and they're coming around, they're checking. They're not only checking that the things are growing, but they're also looking to see whether there are thorns, there are tissues, there are weeds that is trying to choke what was planted. How do you know that there's a choking? There are few parameters. And I've seen it. The other day, I have asked the brothers and sisters we charge with horticulture in the camp, Bethany Resort. I said, plant trees. Go now plant this particular kind of uh, flowers and all of that. And once a while, when I've traveled and I'm returning, I just drive to go and see those my plants because, you know, I'm very interested in them. I now found that when you see uh, people that plant something, they don't sleep. They are thinking about it. Am I right? They are checking it. So one morning like this, I went. I was checking all those my the plants that they have planted. I wanted to see flowers. I want to see good plants. Only to, for me to see. I found that one is turning yellow. I found that others, even though they are trying to survive, but too much weeds have surrounded them so that you can't even know which one is which again. What did I do? What did I do? As busy as I was, I bent down. And I started to, to do what? To remove the weeds. To remove the weeds and gather fresh soil around what I want to grow. What I don't want to grow, what do I do? I remove it. What I want to grow, what do I do? I nurture it. The vine dresser he goes around every time and he checks which of my plant is getting choked. Getting choked with weeds. Getting choked with ideas. Getting choked with worldliness. Getting choked with cares of life. What does he do? He removes them. Do you permit God, divine dresser, this morning to go around? To go around each one of your life to see. It's not that you don't have the right seed. There's a seed. And that seed could have been a mighty tree inside of you as you are sitting before me. There's a seed. There's a good nurture that could have made you great. But unfortunately, there are weeds. There are thorns that have come inadvertently around your life. And they are choking. They don't allow you to focus. They don't allow you to prepare for fruitfulness. You are there occupying the space, but not growing because eh, you are not separated from weeds. Do you think when we are praying this morning, we can ask God, the vine dresser, please come weed me out? Would that be a good prayer? Lord, do what? With me. You see, I've raised three prayer points. The first prayer, Lord, replant me where there was no seed. If there's no seed, there's no expectation of fruitfulness. So God, replant me. Even though I'm in the general vineyard and everybody is thinking I'm there, but I'm not there. I don't have what it takes to produce the life of the true vine, replant me. That's the first prayer. The second prayer, Father, I don't know what has happened to the seed that was cut in my life. I don't know why I am looking so dwarf, dry, nothing. Dig me up and check my roots. Check whether some termites have attacked me under. Ah, and the termites that attack from under is more dangerous than the one you see on the leaves. Am I right? The one on the leaves is nothing. <laughs> the one under is more dangerous. Dig me up, Lord. And then the last, weed me out. 
weed me out. Weed out from my life every weed. Everything that will not allow your life to find expression in me. Oh, almighty God, weed me out. Three very important prayers. And I think such categories of men and women are here. And we need to pray about that. Mark that. Even when I begin to ask you to pray, if I did not remember to ask you to pray for that, never you forget your own self. Allah No man shaking you. Oh, That's what the prophet said. He said, a man that has problem, he knows how to treat his own problem. Are you understanding? Eh? You know, you know where something is biting you. Don't be looking up and down. Focus on it. God will help you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. But what else is the ministry, the labor of the vine dresser in order to produce fruits of the true vine is looking for? I've talked about planting. But now I want you to go now to verse 2. To verse 2. Are you there in verse 2, please? Verse 2. 15, 2. Yes. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit. My old King James said, every branch in me that beareth no fruit. What does the father do? He takes away. He takes away. All of you, please listen. I told you that this passage is so profound, even though it's simple. There are too many issues in this passage that for a whole lifetime, we can study and study. And if we are sincerely looking for fruitfulness, we will not finish it. And there's no need to be doing anything high sounding when we have profound instructions for our lives here. He said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. Let's quickly settle on that. Why does he take every branch that does not bear fruit in me? Where does he take it away? Why? I thought somebody would stand up and tell me. Who wants to tell us why? Eh? It's a waste. It's a waste. Brother, stand up. Say it again. It's a waste. Is a waste. May you not be a waste. May God not consider you to be a waste. The only reason why a branch is brought on the vine is to bear fruit. If he does not bear fruit, the question is, why does he waste our provision? It's a waste. Every branch in me, and I want to note, when Jesus said every branch in me that does not bear fruit, even if Jesus, are you hearing me? wants to keep the branch. The vine dresser for which the vine is existing overrules. Oh, you are, are you getting what I'm talking about? Look at this plant. There's this branch that is just growing like that. It's not producing fruit. They are checking it's not producing fruit. And all the sap that is coming all the way from the root system, everything that has been done, this is just consuming it. 
and the other branch that will have produced fruit is not allowed to have enough. Even if the vine wanted to keep it, the vine dresser said, for your health and for the productivity we are looking for, this one is not good. We will cut it off. And the true vine, not arguing with the vine dresser, says, yes, sir. Your decision is my command. My brother, I know Jesus loves you. Abby, I know Jesus loves you. And Jesus would like to keep you here as long as possible. But not the vine dresser. The vine dresser says, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. you are not permitted to carry branches that are useless. You are not allowed to bear to carry these branches that are bearing no fruit. They are wasting you. They are wasting you. They are wasting your purpose. This is not why you were planted. This is not why you went to Calvary. You didn't come to Calvary to die. And only for nothing. Then you will see the result of your travail and you'll be, you'll be satisfied. The will of God will prosper in your hand. Not by this kind of branch. We will cut it off. Because it's a waste. This is a heavy point to raise. Very heavy. Sometimes I wish it is not there. But it is there. We cannot run away from it. And my friends, can I tell you? When the vine dresser comes and does not see the fruit that he's looking for, even if you plead with him, say, give me one more year. One more year. It's okay. It's one more year of 365 days. They are checking. 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 You will not know the sentiment I have this morning when I see plant that me <laughs> and I'm not the same like my wife. You see, my wife, any plant she has allowed in the compound is either producing fruit for us to eat. Are you understanding? Eh? If it is not producing fruit and it's not uh, blossoming for the purpose for which it is planted, my wife will go around it after some time and say, Dad, we're, we're taking this thing off. I say, no, leave it. I like it. In fact, the whole, it's very beautiful. It's giving good shape to the house. Is it shape? There are other plants that are giving shape to this house and giving us fruit. We don't need shape without fruit. Sometimes they allow me to travel. <laughs> By the time I'm arriving, everywhere is empty. I said, what happened? Those are, those are. Mommy said we should approve this thing. Hey. I said, Mom, so finally, he said, yes. It's, what is he doing there? It's useless. I have decided to plant something else. Some of us have sentiment to keep useless branches. Some of us, our heart is so tender. They say, well, even if it's not producing anything, let it just be coming. Let it just be coming. May we thank God for him. It's okay. It's okay. And just, just, even though he's not very useful, give him, give him a position in the fellowship. He's been here for a long time. If we don't make him a, a Bible study leader, the people we think we don't like him. So let's make him. Whatever is happening. Sentiment. Vine dresser has not such a sentiment. We don't use relationship to keep a fruitless branch.
We don't use tribalism to keep a fruitless branch. We don't use any other consideration to keep a fruitless branch and let it just be occupying the space. Every branch, look at the way Jesus put it, but every branch, oh my God, in me that beareth not fruit. What's the meaning of every? Eh? Oh! God doesn't respect anyone who bears no fruit. He takes away. I pray God will not take you away. God will not take you from your lampstand. You have been known to be branch. You have been recognized. The only thing you need to do is to make sure you bear fruit. Whatever is stopping your fruitfulness, may God stop it in the name of Jesus. But every branch in me that bears no fruit, my father takes it away. The vine dresser takes it away. And when the Lord was saying this, he said it with serious passion. And immediately he added the second side of it. I am more interested in the second side because I'm, I really pray that there will be no branch in Jesus that does not bear fruit. I just pray, you know, if I stop this meeting this time and say, let us pray, that would be my cry. I say, God, let there be no, no, no fruitless branch in this class. Let, no, let, there, let there be no sister here who does not produce fruit. God, please, we are not many. Why will you cut some away again? Are you hearing me? Eh? The number of disciples that we are looking for, they are not yet many. Why will God have to cut away some again? But God is not interested in membership. He's not interested in number. What is he interested in? Fruit. He wants to see the fruit of the vine. Want to see Christ's life breaking forth in you? Nothing else satisfies God. Nothing else excites God. Maybe you think something else makes God happy. Nothing. He said, in this hearing is my Father glorified when you bear much fruit. That's the only thing that glorifies the Father. Nothing else. Nothing else. I wish somebody would cry this morning for being unfruitful. I wish it would be an urgency in your heart and say, God, 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 you didn't bring me into this branch, into this tree to be barren. Lord, make me fruitful. I wish your prayer would change when I come to the, the, the indispensable abiding of the branch. When I come to that, I trust that God will help me to note that with you. I think you should be eager about this. Hallelujah. Are we together? Do you think I can continue? Eh? Or are you already tired of hearing this? Okay, he said, and every branch that bears fruit, that's the one I am interested in. That's the one that I thought should take a bit of my time this morning. Because that's the kind of man I myself wants to be. Every branch that bears fruit. What does he do? He purges, and the word purges means he prunes that it may bear more fruit. There are two or three critical issues 
that we should deal with here. First note that the one that does not bear fruit at all, what does he do? He cuts off. He takes away. But the one that bears fruit, all of you listen to me now. Are you hearing me? The one that bears fruit, immediately God sees fruits on your life. Hallelujah. Something rises in God. Say we can get more. The fact that there is some fruit coming out of your life, no matter how small, already points to the fact that you have capacity for what? For more. I discovered that God has an insatiable passion for more fruit. Oh, and that excites me a bit. What's my excitement? It means that whatever, oh, listen, are you listening to me? Whatever fruit has been produced by my life, it raises hope in the heart of God that I can get more from this brother. I can get more from this sister. I can get more from this young man. I can get more even from this old man. So God now decides, what do I do to get more fruit? <laughs> and for me, what is exciting is that, so God, you, are still, you still believe that there's something much more that can come out of my life. He said, yes. And that's why I'm going to focus on you now. When I have traveled up and down, when I have, and people are coming to greet me, I say, ah, brother, congratulations. We thank God. Oh, your ministry has affected us and all of that. And just before I would collect the handshake, I hear God saying, but it could have been much more. Why do they congratulate you when there is need for much more? Ah. Why do they give you a seat for decoration when I'm still longing for much more? Come over for my pruning hooks. Who told them that all they have seen in your life is all I could have got? Move, 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 come along. There's something more to do to produce more fruit in your life. So I want to examine what is peculiar, what is the deliberate labor of divine dresser for more fruitfulness, for much fruitfulness, for utmost fruitfulness. Number one, every fruit-bearing branch is a candidate for more fruitfulness. Is there anybody here who is a candidate for more fruitfulness? Let me see your hand up. Yes, yes, yes. It means that as you are sitting here, if there's any little manifestation of that fruit of the vine breaking forth in your life, heaven is saying, yes, this is the one we want to preserve. This is the one we need to trim. This is the one we need to prune for more fruitfulness. So, on this note, on this note, I sense that even me, I am coming under the pruning for God to produce something more. And that's why this message, when we come to this point, we are all on the same level. Hallelujah. And when, whether you are praying your own prayer or you are not praying, how we pray? 
When it comes to that, I may not even give you another call because I will go and lie down for myself and say, Father, prove me more. Prove me more. Lord, I'm hearing that for every fruit that my life produces, there can be much more. For every breakthrough I have had for God, there can be a greater breakthrough. For every group of souls that said my life affected them and they were blessed. If that is true, it means there could be much more. If I hear you give a testimony, I say, oh, sir, I read one book, one of your books, and it affected me. What you have said. Can I hear what you have said? Can I tell you what you have said? Go for more. It means God, who is not limited, who is not exhausted, could have done much more. If you allow him to prune you, go for more. Who will go for more in this meeting? Ah, may God help you to go for more. So, what does God do to the branch in me that bear a fruit? Now, as I was trying to study, I came at someone who was discussing the peculiar nature of, of the plant called the vine. And explanation was that Every vine, when it is growing and is doing well, the more productive it is, the longer the branches grow. And as the branches are growing, are you all hearing me at all? As the branches are growing, what happens is that it is towards the tip that they will bear fruit. So, the longer the branch that is bearing fruit grows because of the outworking of the sap, because of the good environment, because of the good intention to grow, the longer it grows, the more energy it saps to, to service that length. Before you get fruit. Are you understanding? So when the vine dresser comes. He says we thank God. Thank you for your long growth. But your long growth is not what I'm looking for. What am I looking for? Fruit. Fruit. Much more fruit. <laughs> ha! That was touching me. So what does the vine dresser do now? Eh? Because he needs more fruit. He needs much more fruit that can be achieved, that can be produced without wasting too much of the sap from the stem. So what does he do now? He will look at that fruit, that, that brand that is bearing fruit. He knows that it has capacity to bear more. But it has now become too long. What is making it too long? Years of growth. Experience. This is not sin. We are not talking of sin now. We are not talking of weeds. We are not talking of wrong habit. We are talking of good growth that came out of the work that was done in the past years that has made this plant to become elongated. Are you understanding? So that when people go and say, God, thank God, this branch has been here for long. See how long it has grown. See how hard it has become. Ah, thank God. And when we trace it, we trace it, we trace it, we trace it, we trace it. When we get towards the end, we see some fruit that it has borne. But for those fruit that it has now produced, are you understanding? It has now used plenty, plenty sap from the, from the vine 
to service his growth. Papa said, thank you for growing. But it is not your growth we want to celebrate. It's your fruitfulness. I will cut it. So what does God cut now? He cuts the good growth. You are not hearing me. He cuts what you could have used as an evidence of several years of growth. He cuts what people will come and admire. Say, ah, Baba, Kai, for how many years you have, been, you have been on this branch? We thank God for you. Hey! You have been consistent for 20 years. Can I see how, see how you have become fat? See, mm, thank God. Kai, mm, hi. praise God. Mm, you have been there for many years. Baba said, that's not why you are here. If I added another year to your life, it is not to celebrate the past. It is to bring forth what? Fresh, much fruit. I know I'm dealing with something that is difficult for you to understand. Because what you have understood is that it will prune what is not good. It will prune what is not useful. It will cut off what is not. But no. No. I want to show you now. I know some of you that are farmers. You understand what I'm saying? When you have a mango tree that is growing well, it has grown, it's producing fruit. But the fruit, before you can assess the fruit, because the thing has grown tall, what do you do? You need a special ladder, isn't it? To climb up, to climb up. Some of those fruits, because it's far, is no more accessible to common man. So the birds, they are flying. Before you could reach it, they are eating it. If you want to get better fruit from that mango tree, what do you do? You cut. Are you cutting it because it's useless? No. What are you cutting? You are cutting growth. You are cutting the years of testimony in order to get the fruit. How does that apply to me, to Brother Bile here? How does that apply to you? Those of you that are appearing to be bearing fruit. Yes, the grace of God has worked in our lives for years. And it has even given us a reputation that's given us something that people can identify with and say, I thank God, ah, these brothers, ah, praise God for them. But that's not what matters to God. What matters to God? What matters to God? Current, current, fresh fruitfulness. You are not hearing me at all? What did I say? Current, fresh fruitfulness that is much more than before. And for that to happen, the pruning, cutting off those trunks. And so as I was looking, they said, the correct vine dresser, you know what he does? He cuts off that long branch and just leaves a very short, very short point of it around the point of uh, the nodal junction. Just leaves it. So that when the, when the sap is rushing, 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 it doesn't need to travel too long. It will get to that point and start shooting forth fresh fruits. What was my prayer? Say, God, cut down my old expertise. that you needed so much spiritual energy to maintain. Father, even the good things you have done in my life that is now becoming a reason for show. I want you to cut it. 
so that people will see less, less, even of my old growth. Let me be as short, but as productive. Let it not be a lengthy discussion. So, when we started the uh, place of refuge, when we started the uh, holy convocation, when we started this, when we started that, we know it started. Can you meet anything if it did not start? Eh? So that we started, it's not a story. Stop telling that. We're here for what? For much fruitfulness. That's what I'm here for. Stop boasting. Oh, we have been in discipleship for 30 years. Hey. May God stop your mouth. Because that's not what we are looking for now. What are we looking for? Fruit, fruit, much more fruit. And for God to preserve spiritual energy and apply it to the greatest fruitfulness, those things must be cut. When he's cutting it, he's not cutting a bad thing. He's not cutting off a sinful thing. He's cutting off a gracious, a gracious heart put of several years of continuity with God so that the greater good of producing much fruit can be achieved. He said, the branch in me that bear a fruit. My father does what? Maybe this has become serious. Because I started begging God again. I said, Lord, in economics, which is the natural, there is the law of diminishing return. How many of you know about that law? The law of diminishing return is a natural law. It's a natural law. It applies to everything. It applies even to plant. It applies to people. The truth is that as you grow with age, are you hearing me? The law of diminishing return comes. It's not that you are not productive. Where you used to, and all of you, you know it. Who is a poultry farmer here? Let me see your hand up. Is there anybody who is keeping poultry here? Ah, sister, thank you very much. Will you be willing to teach us poetry this morning? <laughs> She's too shy. She's too shy. She said, I will continue. If I need to contribute, I will. Now, what does a poetry farmer do? When you get layers, at the beginning as you feed them, when they begin to drop, you saw that these layers, they are dropping. Maybe one, they drop about uh, 12 or 15 eggs in three days. You are happy. But as their age increases, as they are getting older, what happens to the number of eggs they drop? Eh? It's diminishing, reducing, reducing. But their food is much. Because it takes much more to feed an old chicken you are not understanding. You need more, more input to service those hard muscles and to maintain the hard bones for it only to drop few eggs. What do the specialists advise such a poultry farmer? Eh? Prune them! Prune them! Sell them out! Clean, clean up. Get new layers. Have you been practicing that? Should God not do it? <laughs> when 
the law of diminishing return begins to come even upon, upon a preacher. He repeats himself. He only warms up old testimonies. People come with big expectations. Ah, this man used to be like this, used to be like that. But when they came, they are disappointed. Because he only produced small. If God does not want to retire him out, what does he do? He comes to prune him again. It comes to cut off not wrong things, good things. Things that have happened because of age, because of years of experience, must be cut so that this man can produce again. I don't know how many of you will be praying, Lord, because you are looking for more fruit. Because you are longing for something that is accessible, cut me short again. Cut off my long, elongated eh, growth of years. Cut me down so that you don't need to service my old experiences. Please, Lord, even though I'm an old fellow, make me as short as one of these new guys. So that if they are doing like this, doing like this, I'm also doing like that. But you know the difference is that the fruit that will be coming out of my own life now will be much more than those beginners. Because one word from my mouth is fermented. You can carry it, a concentrate. You can go now and dilute it and you get many, 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 many bottles. But if God will not cut it, I will use more grace to maintain the old things that is no more useful. I will need more grace to be servicing old friends. Father, prove me. Whether you join me in that prayer or you don't join me, it is my own prayer. Because I do not want the law of diminishing return yet. But you know there's another law that overrules the law of diminishing return. Do you want me to read it for you? Eh? We'll read it now. All of you, follow me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. I want you to go to Psalm 92. Psalm 92. You will see another law there that overrules the law of diminishing returns. That's the one I want. I want to operate on that level. I pray that God will, will help me. If you are there, I would like to read, maybe I would like just to read from the Amplified Bible if I can get it quickly. And then I go on reading. Are you there? Eh? Yes, you can read from verse 12. Uh, you can read from verse 12. If you cannot read from the beginning. The uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. That is, it will be long-lived. It will be stately. Upright, useful, and fruitful. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They will be majestic. They will be stable, durable, and incorruptible. 
planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Growing in grace, they shall still bring forth fruit. When? In old age. They shall be full of sap. Sap of spiritual vitality. And rich in the value of trust, love, and contentment. They are living memorials to show that the Lord is upright and that the Lord is faithful to his promises. He is my rock. There's no righteousness in him. That's this law that overrides the law of diminishing return. But how does God achieve it? Repeated pruning. What did I say? Repeated pruning. So return to chapter 15 that we're reading. Chapter 15 and verse, verse um, 2. We're reading it again. Is anybody able to read that for us? From now, read Amplified Bible 15 verse 2. Yes? Any branch in me, yes? Did you know you are reading to this old congregation? Read as a pastor. Uh -huh. That does not bear fruit. That stops bearing. He cut away. He trims it off. He takes it away. He cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. Hallelujah! Who is ready for the pruning shares of the vine dresser? I'm asking now for sincere people who are saying, oh God, since you are looking for something more, please Lord, prune me until, look at the kind of thing he says. He cleanses and repeatedly prunes every brand that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more not just more fruit in terms of quantity, richer, richer in terms of quality, richer in terms of nutrients, richer. Ah, Lord, make my fruitfulness richer. As years are adding on top of my life, make my fruitfulness richer. Make it a concentrate. Let one word, let one message, let it be unending. Let it be undying. Let every time people listen, let it release fresh anointing that changes life. I have had a reason to start praying for that now. I have a reason to cry to God now. And say, oh God, even though you are sitting here, and you may think that this message is only going to be for you. No. I am praying that it will go beyond you. I am praying that first it will produce fruit in your life that we also begin to be fruitful everywhere you go, that would be wonderful. I'm also praying that if anyone will catch this message, as these guys are capturing it, wherever it goes, which you may not know, let it release a richer fruitfulness in the name of Jesus Christ. 
such that nobody will be able to predict how far, how effective this thing will become on the face of the earth. But that does not come if there is no repeated pruning. If God is not putting in this, this pruning shares, cutting off those things that occupies and constitute a consumption, a, waste, a wasteful consumption of what could have produced more fruit only to service my old experience. That it may be a more, more excellent fruit. Praise the Lord. You know, as I'm watching my time, you know, I said that I'm going to deal with three things, Abby. I said I'm going to deal with the deliberate, intentional labor of the vine dresser. That's still what I'm dealing with. And it does not seem as if I can finish it. It appears as if even if we stop, you cannot stop. Because the vine dresser is looking for more fruit. And the pruning I'm talking about today is not a one-time pruning. It's a repeated fruit. Once God sees fruit, he says, I can get more. Once God finds that you are useful, he said, you can be useful more. So, is there any time we can celebrate yet? Eh? No, no, no. If, if those who want to celebrate, they should be celebrating our fruitfulness that they are eating. Why we go for more? You don't understand? If I stay there, why they are eating? Until when they finish eating me, and they came again and they didn't find another fresh fruit. What would they do? Old, old papa, old papa, you don't finish. Let's go somewhere else. So they'll be going for unripened fruit. Because me, I'm no more producing. I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. If you meet one of these old trees, old mango trees, or old... Uh, uh, orange trees that are producing. When they produce again, take their fruit, compare with the one that is producing its fruit for the first time, those younger trees. Which one is sweeter? Eh? It's because the one that has, you know, something has happened. A metabolism has taken place. This other one, is setting your teeth on edge, even though it's fruit. And that's how we all started. Eh? We all started. I know where, where sometimes when I sit down and listen to the messages I preached many years ago, very hard. <laughs> eh? when, you are, when you are hearing it, you just say, ah! It's setting your, your teeth on edge. It's not my fault. That's how to produce fruit when you are young. You close your eyes, you, you shout on everybody. Yes. It is fruit, but it's sour. It's not sweet yet. The thing that makes it easier to consume has not yet been released. But now, when God has brought a man to a point where he can produce fruits that people can consume, Easily and enjoyably. Now suddenly, the law of the mission return finished him. It's a waste. It's a waste. Are you hearing me? I, I don't, I'm not annoyed with you. Some of you are very young people and I see you writing. Yes, yeah, your book. It's okay. It's okay. But when you meet men who have walked with God, who have gone through hills and valleys, and you have seen the downfall of Satan, not just by singing, but by seeing it. Are you understanding? 
So when they write only one paragraph, you can read that one paragraph and your life is turned around. You go and drink water on top of that for one week before you come back to the next paragraph. Uh-huh. Should such men suddenly become useless? No. That's why we need this vine dresser with his pruning share of love, of great desire, of great expectation to come on our lives again. Since I cannot go beyond here, and so that I will not do a caricature to the second indispensable activity of the true vine in producing, you will permit me to wait until we come in the evening to begin to deal with that. Because to me, that is the indispensable inner activity that we must not miss if we are going to bring forth much fruitfulness. What can produce the kind of fruitfulness is not external. It comes from inside. So I'll, I'll stop at that point. Because if you say I should rush it, I'll be rushing what is not rushable. And I will be doing this. It will be a, it will be a, 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 a an, impair, an impairment to what he does, which I want you to catch. I pray you will catch that. I pray that we will not leave this meeting until that is settled in your life. I'm still looking for brothers and sisters who understand that it's not by power. It's not by might. It's not by giri giri power. It's by my spirit. So I will be dealing with that. The inner indispensable activity of the true vine to walk through its branches to produce much more fruit. But for this time, I think it's okay to ask you to follow me to the place of prayer. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where. Oh Lord, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord. For this and other messages, contact Refuge Bookshop, number 19, Mayura Road, Nabi Plaza, opposite Zikta Model Schools, Baranawa, Kaduna. Telephone numbers 0805-845-5719, 0703-456-8035, email address threshesteam at yahoo.com. Or you could visit our website at www.threshesteam.org.ng. 